34. That's that's the player's name, 34. All right. I don't know. All right. <laughs> All right. More questions than answers, I know. <laughs> well, Vin won last week, right? Yeah, he did. Very, yeah. well, he went to another game five between him and um, a Min Min player whose name escapes me, and I really apologize for that. Ruler. Uh, Ruler, yes. Hoping, I was hoping Ruler would make top 24 again, because I had a, I really enjoyed watching, watching Min Min go that far and like really showing off what that character can do. Yeah, um, it's really good that we're seeing Vegas come out today. I know there's also Grandmaster in the bracket. I don't know how far he got, but he was one of the more recent Vegas players that I've noticed um, come out as of recently. I think he was like ranked number two or three in Vegas before COVID, so it's good to see like this Vegas just show up on MSM and regardless. Yes, of course, though, then the winner of MSM last week. Oh, really good down for him out the stage here. Let's see what we can do this week. Uh, as much as we all hate online Zelda, honestly, just seeing Ven in general <laughs> to come out to tournaments, especially online, is just really fun either way. Especially the fact that Zelda is a character that you can use defensively and aggressively if played properly, and Ven is really good at demonstrating that. Especially against Ruler last week. Yeah, so Quirk starting with the Greninja. Uh, looks like for most of the bracket, Quirk's been using Greninja outside of the qualifier for top 24 where we saw a, um, looks like he chose Game & Watch. Hmm. Alrighty. I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, information here. We have Cosmos and Gato, then in Quark, Glug as an L Glug in Junior. Okay, so we got some, we got some hits today. We have Nordic Glug coming back there and lose your side. Just give me a quick update. Sorry about that. Coming in all late. Nijin, I'm very familiar with the name as well. So yeah, we're still going on through Bracken, so good to see that Cosmos is coming out here to MSN online as well. Yeah, I think he hit some gold and now he has to enter like four tournaments a week or something. Okay. No, no, Solo core in two. Solo core in two. Good to see him either way, though. I'm happy to see Ben, like I said. Online Zelda aside, it's still really good to see him come out here. One of the best Zeldas out there to ever do it. Oh, really good on core tags. Just hold shield when they get up there. You have to be really careful because it's one of those situations where if you do jump out, Zelda actually has enough time to call you out on that. Yeah, Quark, I like this. For Quark, his job at this opportunity here is just to take center stage as much as possible, find a combo, get in, and then get out. You have to look at Zelda here. She's very good at trapping characters to hold shield and then pressure them enough. For Greninja, since she ha he has the speed to contend against that and also counter as well, it's really good for him to just try to use his two best strengths. Because back here, once again, edge guard phase goes to him. I like it because at that situation it was more of a vibe check where he's like if you want to read an opportunity where I might go for an aerial that's on you and then for me I'm gonna stay on the ground I'll smash for 32% Quark is looking for something to get it started here Ven once again with the knight like I said enough time to actually react on the landing but Quark thought he was safe Ven with a secret play here you have to be careful because Zelda loves to go for those opportunities yeah Great job to Ben taking game one. Uh, thank you so much. Zero, I think it's Zero Stratus, so three. Yeah, thank you so much for following. Uh, if you guys have been keyed eyed on Twitter, yes, I do have an announcement uh, during the break. Uh, I'm very excited to show off something that I've been working on for, technically speaking, two months. Two months? Is it two? Yeah, it's <clears throat> sorry, clear my throat a little bit. Technically speaking, two months. So, hope, hope you guys enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what is it? So Vin one. You have to see. You have to see when it's uh when it's break time. Yeah, uh, Vin one. Hmm. Game and watch. I guess this makes sense. 
Yeah, we gotta quit Bane. You might as well try out the other, other character. I agree. Um, I did like the Greninja. It was a very- it, it was starting to show off signs of strength towards the very end. Unfortunately, it was a little bit too, too, little too late, but still, he had a lot of things going on for him. Of course, you already know, Game & Watch, anti-air machine, and once you try to land on Game & Watch, you're eating 63% like so, so it's- you have to really focus on getting the spacing game very well. Uh, no jump here. That's fine, though. And then, most of the time, he's gonna have the right angle on his LP. I don't expect him to mess that up. Yeah. Oh, really oh no. No jump here again. Oh, nice. He held down so you get the box up. That's my recovery. So, I don't know. I was thinking, like, outside of Game Watch, just having really good juggles. Uh, you can use the down B2 pretty well in this matchup. I haven't seen him use it yet, though. Oh, no, no. Oh, yep. Speak of the devil, man. Let's try to see. This is why you're not allowed to talk. You do give the commentators curse, and I feel like Z Fly gives the commentators blushing, so, uh. Well, at least Game Watch weighs, like, paper, so Zelda kills early, earlier than Greninja, at least. Yeah, that's actually something I'm sure Quirk is very aware of, especially with those powerful forward air and back air that Zelda has access to. Pretty much all of Zelda's moves in Kill Game & Watch. Except for like, down to it. That was unfortunate, I was really was facing for the chef. Now we're, now we're starting to see a little bit more of those uh, neutral bees come out from then, where yeah. not only is he going to act like a reflector, but it comes out super fast, so those scramble situations is going to be a very good tool for Ben. That's, I like the one thing that Ben kind of slowly changed it here is now he's a little bit of pushing more with Knight. If Quark does give a situation where he forces himself for a roll or he tries to run away behind Ben for a punish, he does have to worry about Knight. He can buck it still, but it's all about the patience and understanding here. A really good up uh, of on what we said, best up in the game, so it makes it almost invalidates Knight for game watch in a sense where he doesn't have to worry about getting hit. From it, and he can actually punish Ben at the same time. I think Ben kind of understands, like, I, ha I have to play a little bit more reserved on Knight, and then a little bit more towards the spacing here, but two Knights on Zelda, that kind of lets Ben know that that's what has to happen. Like I said, more to on the spacing, really good to punish there on Game of Watch. Game of Watch may be good, but Swords is still something he's very scared of. Man, that's, a, that's a magical sword, too. We just saw a quick what? swipe. Why did he just take 40%? What? <laughs> Why not, man? <laughs> Was that really just one move? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I, I respect it from then. I think he tried to get the angle right in, but really tough with that situation, I guess. Well, I'm pretty sure he just thought that Quark was going to run up and set up for a down smash at the ledge. That's uh, historically what we've been seeing Quark do throughout these games. This game. Yeah. Oh, nice. What a punish. Oh. That was all on Quark. I think he wasted a little bit too much time in that situation. He had the opportunity where he could have gone for a different ledge option. Like with Game & Watch, we could, you 